I was going to say, if, if there's um, nothing really else on the UFC thing, I figure we can move on to the next uh, topic real quick, which um, I guess would be mm-hmm. the I guess the future of Star Wars, because I personally... I personally have been like kind of um I've kind of lost track of Star Wars because I mean number one, I mean my, my girlfriend has Disney Plus so I can easily just get on there and watch it, but I don't usually yeah. take the time to watch all the shows and I just kinda of look up the spoilers and whatnot and everything, so I really have no idea what's going on on The Mandalorian or um the book of Boba Fett yeah. or something like that. Or Andor, I heard Andor was another one that they did I've seen yet. Um, yeah. But it's supposed to. Uh, it, it it's supposed to, it's one that they did it where there's no force in it at all. It kind of gives you like Empire era what life was like, which adding to the myth- mythology of of that. Um, what's interesting right now is what they're focusing on outside of that, like in the books. They're going back to the old Republic and establishing the new canon. Yeah. Um, which I've been listening to those and going through the Nihil and all that stuff. That stuff's really good. And they're they basically made all of the old canon is now non canon and that's that's been called legends now, is what it is. Because it's stuff that could take place, but it they're it's not canon. Um so kind of like an old timeline. People, really hate that no they didn't say it's an alternate timeline they said they're still leaving up to the possibility that's something that could have happened and they're not going to reference any of that because then they would become canon yeah, of course but they uh yeah but so they're saying they're leaving it open for the future if they want to because technically at this point darth revan um malgus all of that stuff never officially happened but it could have happened <laughs> is the way they're establishing it. And they're still coming out with more books for the High Republic era. Yeah. Because the plan for the future, as far as I'm aware, is they want to do a High Republic trilogy that includes big people like Yoda when they're younger, um, which really, Yoda was a thousand years old when he died, so he's still, you know, he's going to be old. Yoda yeah. running. Oh, my God. He, dude, he is a shitty person. Just to let you know, I, I, I'm i in the middle of the Count Dooku thing and covering up some Sith shit that they had. There was some kind of weird-ass creature that they kept in the temple under there without telling anybody else with the Sith artifacts. They housed thousands of Sith artifacts within the temple on Coruscant. And that's the reason why the temple is there, is because that used to be a Sith temple, and so they could protect that. And, and Count Dooku actually let something out, and instead of actually like going after it and hunting it down, he just like covered it up so nobody else would know. And that was a choice from Yoda. So, um, Yoda do be shitty sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm super super interested in that. Uh, I, I would love to talk about Star Wars all the time, especially the books. The books are so good. Uh, I think I think we briefly discussed um, the Obi Wan Kenobi show like like off off yes, my that's really good I would love to do something on that mm-hmm. I want to see more of that I want to see more of of Anakin and there's a lot of people that are like we need like a Darth Vader TV show showing because there's a book there's a book that they wrote that's canon that's canon that's uh basically about Darth Vader at his peak um, when he's been running stuff, all the different things he's done. There's even a new one that they had came out with where at one point he tried to train this one. It wasn't really an apprentice, but it was a chick that was grown up on Naboo that was a handmaiden that looked just like Padme. And, and it was a whole thing between him trying to teach her to survive and be evil, but also she was good and it rubbed off on him. Yeah. And he saw it as if she was Padme if she had never, if she went with him instead of, you know, siding with Obi Wan in the discussion, and then it was, and then the uh, the Emperor was saw that, and he was manipulating that to hurt Darth Vader even more, and he basically like made her choose between this chick who he sees as Padme, and and um, and the dark side, and it killed the rest of Anakin pretty much because he had he slaughtered the chick right in front of him, mm-hmm. right in front of him. 
to prove his royalty um, to Palpatine. So that they've got so much good shit in the books that they just don't really dark shit that they don't talk about because you can't really put some of this stuff. Now, to kind of go back to the whole them making that decision of, like, making the old canon, non-canon, and making it sound like, oh, it's it could have happened, but it, whatever, yada, yada. Was that, like, a yeah. uh, Star Wars, like, producer's executive decision, or was that a Disney decision? That's what that's I'm going to That's a Disney decision. That is where... Disney came in and rewrote. And that's why half the people, you got all this stuff is new through Disney. Now, Disney and the books are choosing to do all this dark shit or, like, they just canologically – like, they just show filled in all of this stuff about Cypher Gius and Count Dooku. Yeah. And, and the Nihil. Like, Martian Row was never a thing before. They didn't have Starlight Beacon. They didn't have all this great hyperspace disaster that happened beforehand. Um, so they're making all – they're adding all of this stuff into the new canon because, really, this time, this time wasn't really explored that well. Before, because mm-hmm. um, we had six thousands of years ago that we had a couple stories about, um, and now we're starting to see. And now we're starting to see all this being filled in. Because honestly, it's a little bit more interesting before the the Empire and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, during their peak, when there's thousands of Jedi, thousands of Sith, there's Night Hill, there's all kinds of things that are happening that are you get to s- explore like this, like the the leveler, like like something that can completely dampen the force like a beast and that absorbs life energy from (laughs) um that thing is scary as fuck they just put that on the biggest space station in the world it basically it killed hundreds of jedi (laughs) hundreds of jedi and it's just like it's it's going through the ventilation system they don't know what's going on and then and then you just know that you're disoriented and next thing you know you're fucking dead you're just a you're a husk you're not even a person it grinds you up into dust so that's scary as fuck. They get off the and they're trapped on the ship. They can't get off. Yeah. So that's like some fucking next level. You could do a horror movie just on the events of what happened to Starlight Beacon. Um, that kind of sounds like the uh, like a necromorph situation with Dead Space, but on like a grander yeah. scale. Yeah. So, um, and some of the stuff's just so graphic. Like the I kind of told you about Loden Great in the last book where he was a Jedi that was captured by the Nihil, and they tortured him, took his lightsaber, so the bad guy had his cool orange lightsaber for the next very, the next book or so. Yeah. Um, and they tortured him the entire time. Um, and they had a whole great dialogue, because his name's Loden Greatstorm. Yeah. And the whole idea of the Nihil is they're the storm. They have clouds, they have strikes, and the, and the leader is the eye of the storm. You know, he's the eye. The guides people through all these different things and he's like what's your name jedi and he's like loden great storm and he had a whole dialogue how that was perfect and it was fate that that he, you know he was going to be the jedi that was delivered upon him mm-hmm. um but they tortured him so much where like they had a robot that would keep keep loden's eyes open at all times and continually torture him to fix it straight if his eye if his pupils go anywhere but looking straight and focused it would it would literally they had little shock probes that would poke into his eyes and scratch his eyes um and Fuck. and he'd be tied up with his hands above his head the whole time and then and then he would continually just like uh, the entire time he'd be under sedatives or sometimes they just have adrenaline on there so it was never one feeling you had and he just like lost all track of time and space and what was going on um, and his the, he was dampened from the force, so he couldn't even like communicate with anyone. And then he finally got loose, and then he unleashed the leveler uh, on him, and just when he thought he was going to be saved. So yeah, um, I was gonna uh, kind of touch back on the how like I mean all, all this stuff I guess that Disney's making. Like I was originally thinking that it was um, not going to be all good. Because, I mean, I kind of base my... The books are really good. I kind of base my opinion about Disney running uh, Star Wars after my opinion on the, the new trilogy and how that didn't really go... I didn't really like what they did and whatnot and everything. Because, I mean, I know there's still yeah. those old diehard fans who like the older content and absolutely hate everything about the new Disney thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the new stuff that Disney's doing is pretty cool. Like, with them doing the all the book stuff you just explained and 
um, the TV shows and everything because it's expanding more. Like, I think the all lore that, that wasn't I think all that's on. good. I I just think that the way they handled um, the director issue between the the episodes that they did, mm-hmm. I think that those were. I think that kind of hurt it. A lot of people give Star Wars shit. I really didn't think that the sequels were that bad. I don't think they're that good. I don't think they're anywhere as good as the prequels or the original series even. Um, but I don't know. I feel like the books are a million times better. The than, books are always better when it comes to everything. People. Well, you could just expand on more. You get three hours in a movie. You don't have that much time. But then you can spend 50 hours writing about it. Uh, uh, so many people. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's that's huge. You can expand so much on so many things and like understand you can kind of understand it better, understand the force and how it works. Like there is this one Jedi who hurt she had a special ability where the force was a song. She could sing and feel things happening through the force. Um and, and you get to see all these different <laughs> things that are they hey listen, they they fucking that's how they found Loden. Because he he was four stamping and they barely felt him. He was like, I think I, he's here, and they I, found the leader of the night hell. Like the my imagery yeah. though, when it came to that, was I was I don't know why this imagery came to mind, but I was just imagining fucking Fiona from Shrek, like embracing <laughs> the power of the force, doing her singing, and just like the scene where she's like singing in the movie yeah. and the bird explodes. I was imagining yeah. that. <laughs> and some of the like. Like tapping in the dark side, it's a very interesting time because there's no not Sith, but the dark side is still present. There during one of the the raids the Nihil did, the uh, the uh, Elzar man was a Jedi, and and in in the city that was being attacked, there's a bunch of floating islands that 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 represented every world that was in the Senate, right? Yeah. And they're huge cities, and they're and they were being collapsed because the Nihil were attacking them, and they were all EMP'd, and there was thousands of people on them. So this guy was super angry because because another Jedi was just murdered. So he tapped into the dark side and he used the Force to pick up two of those uh, of those plant of those big islands that were falling and he threw them into space and destroyed it and destroyed a gigantic cruiser. Mm-hmm. But he killed thousands of people in doing that and dealing with the grief of that and then like he just completely lost himself. Do do you think um, had, um do you think they're ever gonna find a way to tie in um. Star Killer at all, or do you think they're going to ignore to, that? I was about to bring that into that because, like, Star Killer, he's a legend story now officially. Like, he's not. It, it's something that was plausible, but that's something you could see in the TV show because he Vader was consistently trying to find a way to beat Palpatine, but he couldn't. I was gonna say, like, um, I think Star Killer, his story was also originally non-canon before they made this change as well. It's still, yeah, it was still always non-canon. Yeah. It's just it's a video game. Like I mean, um, the 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 second game, from what I heard, the ending wasn't too great. But I mean, like his like his story, from what I've like heard and kind of read up on, has always been like very interesting. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people in the universe really love Stark. Spe- everything he could have been. Isn't he the one that like used like the force to like pull down like that big ass fucking ship? Yeah, yeah, he t- he pulled down an entire star destroyer. And I, I think didn't they recreate? But granted, that? in the Obi one in the Obi one Kenobi series though, uh, Vader effortlessly ripped one of those in half though. But mm. that's because Vader's the strongest Force user in the history of the, of the Force. Yeah, I was gonna say I so. think they kind of recreated that recently in a canon uh, st- uh, storyline, but kind of altered it a little bit. Yeah. So, um, but. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Even whenever Vader, he pulled, uh, whenever uh, Obi Wan was still cut off from the Force in one scene, he pulled in, he pulled Obi Wan onto fire and caught Obi Wan on fire and said, "Now you'll feel the pain." Oh Search. fuck yeah! That final fight scene in Obi Wan Kenobi, like like I said before, I haven't watched any of the TV <laughs> shows and I just look up the spoilers and everything. Like, I actually looked at the last fight, and we had talked about this before, just that last fight and the recreation with the fan edits in there, like, both of them yeah. are just so, like, well, oh, and, my God, and the emotion. Looking, that look into, you know, Anakin's face where he said, it's the first time he actually gets to talk to Anakin since everything happened. Yeah. And he's just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of it. And he just looks at him, you know. 
And then as he's about to like walk away and everything, he says that my friend is truly dead. Goodbye, mm. Darth. It's like he's not Anakin anymore. And he saw that and he accepted it. Yeah, that's just that's so. insane. Just how like like how how they're able to get these T V shows to like be like so good and whatnot. Like I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, was, I, I was honestly, they do a season two. I was honestly kind of, I don't think kinda, they will, but I hope they do a season two. I was honestly kind of happy that they brought Boba Fett back into the fray with the whole, with yeah. the whole Mandalorian storyline and him. Now, I am pretty the sure, Fett, I'm pretty sure, have his own thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if that's already out, I'm not sure if it is or not, but I'm, he's got his own TV show now and like, it's always funny how people are like a huge fan of Boba Fett and everything, but some of the people some of the people remember that he didn't really do anything in the original trilogy <laughs> but i think it's just because the the yeah. fans are fan of the fans are, character. they're huge fans of him because of like what he did in the original books and whatnot yeah so i'm yeah but i'm i'm excited about the future of star wars um i know a lot of people are really against disney but honestly i like i like what they're doing other than uh, um that one made I mean, I like that. now that you kind of gone into detail yeah. about it, like I, I, I'm a little bit more, um, I guess, I guess you can say excited, but I'm also going to have that little like worry about it since there's still that you definitely like, listen to the books. There's that part of me that still still sees those last uh, trilogy set of movies that didn't set well in my head. I was also going to say like yeah. the uh, the sequel trilogy was kind of released in a really weird time period when it came to like the the real world because it got released around the time when like the cancel culture was like starting and got really big and i feel like that how people were and still are nowadays with that and the whole cancel culture thing and how like it's like oh that's not my star wars bullshit like that had a huge like um playing part into why the trilogy didn't do there's also so much hype behind star wars there's og fans that are always going to be against it no matter what it is yeah like anything like you can sit there and talk about like anything from like marvel or like dc or i mean even the the diehard fans from fucking like harry potter or something like every fan base is that that that's like that is going to like have high expectations and when they're let down, they're going to be very, very pissed off. 